Hello everyone. This video will focus on the formation of transitional metal complexes. Um, now, transitional metal complexes is two things that uh, you all have to know about it. One is the formation of ligands. Second is the naming of the metal complexes. Now, as you could see in this video, I'm going to outline and explain what is a ligand and um, how does it form from a transition metal and how does it um, complexes with a transition metal. Now, the metal obviously would be either an atom or an ion and it would be surrounded by what we call as ligands. Now, ligands uh, which can be an atom or an ion or a polyatom ion uh, we will look at it in a while, will surround the metal and it will form what we call as a coordinate, coordinate covalent bond or also known as dative covalent bond. So uh, I believe you guys are quite familiar with dative. We have uh, done that in class when we talked about Lewis structure. Now, um, if it's not clear there, I will write it here. Sorry for the poor writing because I'm not too familiar with this software called Paint Light. Anyway, um, now the thing about transition metal is it will have a d orbital, and especially in the ion um, uh, form, the d orbitals should be partially empty. Now, if you remember the previous video, the definition, when we establish the definition of a transition metal, it means in the form of ion, it will have a d orbital that is partially filled, which means there is empty space in the d orbital, which the ligand, which is which can be an atom molecule or an ion, that has lone pairs, and it would be able to fill it up. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about different type of ligand. Now there is mm, ligands that we can call as monodentate. Now this, this term dentate comes from, I believe, Latin. Um, dent, dentate comes from the word, uh, which also means teeth. You know, this is similar to teeth where the lone pairs, you can see here, I'm circling it, the lone pair on ammonia, it's like a teeth which will go and sit in the empty orbitals as in the metal. So monodentate, the term mono simply refers to the value of one, which means you have, it only forms one bond with the metal ion. So examples of monodentate ligands, which is ammonia, chloro ion, cyanide ion, and obviously water. You have to remember the meaning of monodentate and you have to remember at least three examples for it. Moving on. Bidentate, I guess by now you should be able to guess. Bidentate refers to it being two, formation of two bonds with metal atomal ion. So this is an example, ethylidiamine or oxalate ion. Not too popular for exam. Um, our syllabus is uh, more on the monodentate, which is the most common form of ligands. Okay, moving on. Uh, you can pronounce it as ligands or ligands, depending on which part of the world you belong to, essentially it's the same. Poly, obviously, refers to it being more than two, because if it's two, then it's bi. Anything more than two, it usually refers to many bonds, okay? And this is very, very rare for exam. EDTA is a substance that we use in many medical applications, uh, triphosphate ion. Um, there is not much applications that you would use uh, polydentate um, ligands um, in our syllabus per se, but you do just have to know the name of the examples and of course uh, the fact that it has many bonds. Okay, so so far we have a uh, quick recap. We have established what is a ligand. Ligand is basically, um, it can be atom, it can be molecular ion that has at least one lone pair. So that's key. This is really, really important lone pair, you can be asked to define ligand in exam. Um, they can form complexes. Complexes refers to being a complex molecule um, with 
transitional metals because the definition of transitional metals is um, um, elements that basically when it forms ions it would have the orbital that is partially filled okay so take note of that then there is uh, different classification of ligands depending on how many bonds they can form with the metal ion monodontate which is the most common you require to know these examples bidentate is two bonds and of course polydentate is anything that is uh, more than two all right coordination number okay coordination number there's not much that we will do with coordination number except for naming it coordination number um, could vary now it is the number of bonds that is normally formed between the metal ion and the ligands in the complex ion once they form the bond we would refer to them as complex ion um, there's no particular way of uh, measuring it but it could vary from two to eight totally depends on a lot of factors such as size charge and electron configuration this is the most common so you would see lots of um, the word hexa would repeat again and again later on when we talk about the naming uh, four and two is the most common it's old it's really really rare for it to be more than six many metals shows more than one coordination number there's no way to predict it so you don't have to worry too much about this you just have to you know know the meaning of coordination number that's about it okay that's the end of it so this uh, video would basically introduce to you what is a ligand and um, the different types of ligands later on you would learn to name a complex ion which obviously would involve the, the, the usage of ligands. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.